with what God is trying to lead with us to to take in to the new year. And if you have it, as I say again, Matthews, the sixth chapter, verses 31 through the 34th verse. And they read it, therefore take no thought, saying what should we eat, or what should we drink, or where, where we should be clothed. For after all these things do not the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the end of his holy and divine word. Let us pray. Most wise, everlasting, eternal, gracious God, we thank you again for this opportunity. Lord God, that we can give a word to your people to inspire, to encourage, but also commit. Lord, we thank you, dear Father God, for this year, Lord God, that we are about to approach a new year. We thank you, Father, for how you have kept us through this pandemic how you have kept us through the social unrest, how you have kept us in this uh, spiral economy, Lord God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for how you washed over us this Christmas, Lord God, and allowed us to have a Christmas reasonable, dear Father God, even though we could not go and fellowship and could not go and enjoy our family members afar and near. So Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless us continue to encourage us, Lord God, continue to give us the strength because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we thank you for the joy of Jesus Christ, that unspeakable joy that keeps us going, Lord God, but most of all, that love that covers the multitude of our sins. So Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for our pastor. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless him and keep him, Lord. Give him the strength that he that he needed, Father God. And we thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for the first lady. We thank you for every member in Second New St. Paul, Lord God. We pray that you will touch them, Lord God, on this New Year's Eve, Lord God. Although we might not be able to worship and fellowship in the church, we can worship and fellowship at home. So, Father, we pray to Father God that you will have thy own divine way because you are still God and God all by yourself. We ask these and other blessings in the mighty and precious name of Jesus the Christ, our soul say amen. So we thank you again <clears throat> to our pastor for this opportunity to allow me to stand and to give you a word from the Lord. And if there's a word that I would like to give you, it would be don't worry. Because we all have been in an uncertain situation this 2020 of worrying about the virus, worrying about um, losing our jobs, worrying about our homes, worrying about our loved ones. But God is here letting us know not to worry, not to worry about things of tomorrow, but to realize that God holds the future in his hand. As the Canada year turns to a new year, we hold expectation loosely in our hands. While we hope for a better year, a fresh beginning and a new opportunity to increase our faith. The heaviness of the past year is real. There are many of us who suffer loss of family members and loss of jobs and even dreams that we had when we was able to dream. But, but God is offering a hope in the struggle and the help in the hardest days of our time. As we look forward into the unknown future, we can also also look into God's word and find hope for unexpected days that lies ahead. God reminds us to cast all our cares upon him for he cares for us. He also reminds us that he would never leave us 
or forsake us. He will always be with us to the ends of the world. So I'm here to let you know there are about to come some uncertain days. We don't know what to expect in the year of 2021, but if we know that we have a God on our side who knows the times of the day, who knows the number of hairs upon you here, he knows about the uncertain future because he knows the future. The future is in his hands and we just need to walk with him and talk with him and continue to do what we've been doing in the year of 2020. I know we've been praying. I know we've been praising. I know we've been giving him thanks for all what he has done. And I and I had to reflect in my own life because nine months is a long time to go through a struggle. Nine months is a long time to be isolated and, and separated from the loved ones and the human touch and the communication with one another. I, I miss coming to church and I miss the life of my sisters and brothers. I miss the laugh of my pastors and the deacons and the trustees, but God is reminding us that he will always be with us. He will always encourage us and tell us to lift our heads and continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. I'm here to let you know we have to don't worry but be strong. We have to realize worry is not going to get us nowhere. Well, worry is just going to bring fear and anxiety and, 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 and destruction if we continue to worry about the things that we have no control of. My sister and brother, God is telling us, don't worry. In other words, be happy because he's always on our side. He will always look for us. He will always supply our needs. He will heal us when the time comes. He will take our hands and walk with us when we need to be walked. Because sometimes, Lord God, this sometimes, my sister and brother, this can be a struggle. It can be a struggle realizing that we sometimes worry about things that we don't have no control. The word of God tells us in Matthew 6, 4, it said, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow worries about its own thing. See, we can't control what goes on from day to day, but God controls the day. God knows what's going to happen before we even get up the next morning. We just need to continue to stay in prayer and stay in his goodness and stay in because the Bible tells us that there is no good thing that God will withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. And God is just telling us to trust in him. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about 2020. Everybody's worrying about the vaccine and who's going to take this. And some folks are talking about they're not going to take the vaccine because they don't trust the doctors and the scientists. Yeah, but God wouldn't give these people the mind that they give, the mind that they have for us not to trust them. But we cannot put our trust all in them. That's the reason why we must trust in him and lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge him in all our ways. And he will direct our path. He will direct us to take the vaccine and he will take away our fear because God does not give us the spirit of fear, but the power and love and of a sound mind. My sister and brother, we have an almighty and righteous God and he will guide us and lead us to what we need to do. So stop putting your trust in your guarantee in the elect president, Joe Biden. Don't put your trust in Vice President Harris. We thank God for them being elected. We thank God that, that, that God walked in the White House and, 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 and shaped up things and put a new man and a new woman in the White House. But we cannot put our trust in them. We have to put our trust in God. So don't worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to wear or what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. Because God, if he can take care of the birds and the fowls of air, he so enough can take care of us. So my sisters and brother, trust in him. Worry is one of the things that burdens our heart and cause the mind to lean toward anxiety. It fears and, and intimidates. Worry can fear us, intimidate because we worry about so much that our brain cannot uh, comprehend or can, can hold, but if we put all our trust in, we, as the word of God tells us, if our mind stays on him, he will give us perfect peace. He will give us peace that will pass all understanding. He will take away the temptation. We like to realize that we walk by faith and not by sight. So stop looking at things. Stop worrying about what you hear on the news. Stop worrying about what you hear people saying, but worry about and listen to the voice of God. Because God knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for a long time. And I'm here to 
and let you know he knows how to take care of his own. So stop worrying about your loved one. Stop worrying about your job. Stop worrying about the money in the bank. Stop worrying about your house because God will take care of you. Yeah, he wants you to plan for tomorrow. Yeah, he wants you to get things together and make sure that you have your house in order. But he also wants you to walk with him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to talk to him. Even sometimes laugh at him. Because I know that we had some difficult days. I know we had some difficult times. And 2020 is behind us. But 2021 is in front of us. But we have to still walk in Christ. We must still believe and trust in Christ. Because let me tell you something. The pandemic, the virus is nothing but a distraction because sin is still the root of all our problems. We need to come and, and realize that the Bible tells us that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we have a Savior that can wash away our sin. We have a Savior that can, get, that can wipe us white as snow, and we need to trust in Him. We need to come and repent. So continue what you're doing. Continue praying. Continue trusting God. Continue having your faith strong in the Lord. Because let me tell you something. As I say it again, we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. So we must trust in God. And I thank God for me going through this struggle of nine months because he had to let me realize that my exodus is in him. He is my exit out of all of this stuff. He is my exodus out of this virus. He is my exodus out of this, this spiral economy. He is my exodus out of this social unrest and disturb. The, the, the situation that happened in Nash Nashville, that's not because of the pandemic. That's because sin is still running rapidly. Sin is, sin is still the root of all our problems. And we must realize that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God's eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He didn't die on the cross for nothing, but he died that he might wipe away our sin. He died that we may have a better future. He died that we may trust in him because his the hem of his garment is still our medicine. And if you know that he is a healer, you need to trust in him. If you know that he's a lawyer in the courtroom, you need to trust his judgment and trust him how he advocates for us and how he protects us and keeps us. So don't worry. Don't allow worry to intimidate you, to cause you to think of things that, that's not there. It can cause a mirage, sometimes the uh, illusion. He, and you think you're thinking of things, but that's not what. But if you think on the word of God, if you abide in the word, and the word abides in you, the word will comfort you in times like these. The word will give you strength that you need to hold on to Him. So, my sister and brother, He who is above all things, He who creates all things, He who is our Savior, who he who knows and loves us, he who came for us, he who died for us, he who rose for us, he who intercedes for us, he who will one day come again for us, he will personally carry our word. I'm here to let you know, my sister and brother, there's no need to worry. Because 2,000 years ago, the Father, the one who said he loved the world so that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you begin to worry, think on those words. Think on what Jesus Christ had done for you and me. Don't think that you was here all by yourself in this year of 2020. You had somebody watching over you when you didn't know that he was watching over you. And I'm here to let you know that as he came down here 2,000 years ago, he came to calm our fears and reassure us that we don't have to worry because he will always be with us. And I like the Calvary story, and I'm never going to stop telling it because as I say again, 2,000 years ago, the Father sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
As they marched him up the Dolphins Hill and they laid him on the old rugged cross and they nailed him in his hands and nailed him in his feet, but they hung him high and they stretched him wide. But he didn't say a monthly word. He stayed there. And my sister and brother, while he was on a cross, he was praying. And he's telling us, even through this time, we need to pray. Don't lose heart. Never give up on prayer. And as he prayed, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he's saying the same thing now, because I'm here to let you know, it's not the pandemic that causing our trouble. It's sin. And if we don't recognize that, then we have missed the whole mark. But he died. He stayed there from the sixth to the ninth hour. And as he stayed there from the sixth to the ninth hour, I hear him saying, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and they took him down from that cross and they put him in the bottle tomb. And he stayed there. But he stayed there all Friday night. He stayed there all Saturday morning and Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, my sisters and brothers, he got up with all power in his hands. And he said today, don't worry. Cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about the vaccine. Don't worry about Dr. Fauci and Dr. Bird. Don't worry about uh, elect Biden and her. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about the doctor, but trust in me. For I am your exodus. I am the one that's going to take you out of this pandemic. I am going to take you out of this this social injustice and this economy is smiling. Folks losing their jobs and folks are on their unemployment don't know they're going to get an unemployment check because we're dealing with crazy people in the White House and up there on the hill. But God is still in charge because he sits high but he still looks low and he takes care of his own. He will never fail us, my sisters and brothers. So trust in him. Trust in the cross because it's nothing but the cross. I tell you, it's nothing but the cross that will lead us out of this spiral year into a new year. May God continue to bless you and keep you. May you have a happy new year, a prosperous one, and be saved. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray.